Hi, my name is Barry Sahajian, and I'm going to be talking about root and fifth bass lines, how to make them more interesting, more effective, and a lot more fun to play using variations and other techniques. Let's get started right now. As simple as a root and fifth bass line is, there are ways you can make it sound more interesting by using variations. You have a limited amount of variations you can use, but nevertheless, you should be able to take advantage of everything that is available. And I see that a lot of people don't. I teach a lot of students. They're in awe when they realize there's so much more that you can do with a root and fifth uh, aside from just a standard... I mean, that works, but there's many other options you can use to make it sound interesting. And if you're doing a gig on a country gig or another type of gig where root and fifth is, uh, is mandatory, you have to play it, you have no other option because if you don't play, you start to put in fills and trying to make it interesting, you'll get fired off the band and <laughs> you'll lose the gig. Let's explore some of the options. First option. Down to the fifth. Root down to the fifth. In this case, a C to a G. Now let's go up to the fifth. That works fine, but depending on either of these, uh, if you're up to in, in the wrong position, you don't have enough, you don't have the notes available, you're going to have to make adjustments. For instance, if you're on a G, naturally you can't go down to the fifth because there's no lower string. So you have to go up. So it kind of works, um, this alternating, going up and down, really only works on the, on the center two strings, the A and the D string. Now you've seen down, you've seen up, now let's alternate. Okay, so you have another, that's one variation, going back and forth and alternating every other time. Let's take another variation. If we turn this into a four bar phrase, we could play going down to the fifth three times and go up to the fifth the fourth time. This creates a four bar sound, a four bar phrase. Let me illustrate. A little more interesting, it holds your uh, attention for full four measures. Now, let's take it and reverse it. We'll go up three times and down once. This is a very simple variation that works okay. And what you do is you play a root, a fifth, and then you play a fifth, which replaces the root you would have played there, and then up to the fifth again. And it sounds great, no one's going to notice, it will still follow your root and fifth on the first and third beat, although it'll, give, it'll just give a little something different for the ear to notice that, hey, I'm here, I'm doing something different. And to put it into perspective, turn it into a four bar phrase. And that's another way you can just uh, and just make it move, make it change a little. You know, maybe it's unacceptable to some people that you may be playing with as an accompanist. They might just expect that solid root fifth, root fifth. But you know, you can always slip it in and and make it interesting. And maybe it will be acceptable by the other members of the band. And maybe um, you'll just have to work harder to find a way to please them. <laughs> Next, we're going to talk about rhythm. A nice, tight rhythm with accurate notes and note values and the rests and everything put into perspective so it clicks. That's what really makes it feel well. And all these ideas I just gave you are not going to go nowhere without this element of hardcore rhythm. Hardcore playing in time, accenting, and uh, whether it's short, long notes. So anyhow, let's start out with just making sure that we are playing a quarter note and it stops right on the second beat. First beat stops dead on the second beat. And then third beat starts right on the beat and stops dead on the beginning of the fourth beat. So you want...
You hear all that sounds, you can hear it. It's, it's, it kind of snaps into place, you know. If you're a little sloppy and you let the note ring over the uh, second, into the second beat, even a fraction, and it doesn't work. It just doesn't have that feel, you know. Another approach is, and this works very nice if you're playing in a, a duo perhaps, or even a trio, is to kind of slap it a little on the end of each root or fifth, you know. Now you're sort of taking the place of a drummer if you are playing in a duo or reinforcing what's going on with the drummer. Maybe the drummer isn't the uh, most uh, accurate in his time and you can give him a little boost if you want by doing that. And I think it really, it makes it move, you know what I mean? Especially, most likely, I'm figuring you might be playing dance music and that's very important. You gotta have that feel. You wanna make them get up and wanna dance, you know? Of course, you can go up too. Now, that goes across the board in all styles of music. You know, I mean, articulate note values and time, and you know, but since we're talking about root and fifth, I want to point out the importance of doing that as well. Now, let's change the rhythm. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit the bell to be notified of all the videos yet to come, like and comment. On my Patreon page, you'll find all the study materials I've used here, including notes and tabs and play-alongs. Thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you again.